dark times have fallen upon the land of Zur. On the horizon, rival wizards from the realm have gathered to battle. <laughs> Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Wizard Bluff by Crooked Tower Games. Plays two to five players, takes about 45 minutes to six minutes to play, and it's for ages, they say eight and up, maybe a little higher, but you can go ahead and be the judge for yourself. In the game Wizard's Bluff, you're gonna be playing a trick-taking game that has bluffing. You'll be placing cards down, flipping them over at the same time after bidding, and hopefully winning those gems. There's some precious gems you're gonna need in the game, and if you can get these wonderful gems, you're then going to be able to uh, also potentially purchase these cards uh, with your winnings and that is going to allow you to use those which will then of course increase your track for your wizard to make you a little bit stronger to then gather more points at the end of the game depending on how many crystals you have. Have the most crystals worth the most points, you'll win the game of Wizard's Bluff. It's a pretty simple game on uh, its basis, but it gets a little complex as to how you want to play, when you want to choose to play those cards, and what cards you want to play down, because everybody has the same set of cards. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look down below. I'll show you what's in the game, how to play, and then I'll tell you what I think about it. So here we have Wizard's Bluff, and it's set up to show you the four characters in the game. The rulebook says two to four, that says two to five. Not sure, look in the Kickstarter, you figure it out but there's going to be four different elemental types water mage cards fire mage uh, earth and air and these cards are trying to get, gather so that you can increase your values on these specific elements on your cards put each checker at zero and choose one of the wizards each wizard's also gonna get their own deck and the way you tell the difference between them is be based on the color of each of the decks each of the decks will have an ace all the way to 12 so everybody's gonna have the same amount of cards in the game this is for the leading player you're gonna get the person who wins the trick this as well as the starting player and over here is the point scoring board this is where you're going to place your wizard color token and it's going to go up on the track at the end of the game additionally over here you're going to have these little jewels that you're going to be taking and bidding with to uh, hopefully win tricks with that will let you get cards there's additionally these gold tokens here that will also give you points at the end of the game based on your highest trait of uh, elemental mastery and these are also really useful to bet on because there's a likelihood that you can get any card you want with them when you win. A bag will come with the game as well. That is where you put all your little magical uh, crystals. There is a mat, the box, and the rule book here for the game, and that's pretty much what you get. I'll go ahead and set it up for two players. I'll show you a little bit of how to play, and then we'll come up and I'll give you my review. Thanks, puppy. Thanks. So now we're back to Wizard Bluff, and I went ahead and set it up for two players. Each player is going to get their own deck of cards, and it has their color on them, like I showed you. Go ahead and hide them from the other players so that they cannot see what cards you have left in your hand. Go ahead and take your wizard and set it next to you, so that way you will know what uh, powers you're going to have, and they're all going to start at zero, of course. Additionally, in a two-player game, each player can choose any two of these cards here, and in any other number of players, you're going to take one of any of these cards. Uh, so green will go ahead and take one of his colors, because why not? And he'll take a blue, and then red will take one of his colors, and maybe he'll take a white. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it's one of his colors, because you can actually go into any different mastery, but it is red. That is the color, so I'll go ahead and place them over here to the side. And then we got our bag. I'm going to go ahead and give out 12 random special uh, gems here to each player. So there's 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, and then this player over here... He's going to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and one more, just like that. Okay, we can actually take these out of the bag and just leave them right there for you. And then after that, make sure you move these up so that you have enough room in the middle of the table. The player who is the wisest or the player who is the oldest will go first. And we will just look at these. We'll say that green looks probably the oldest, so we'll set that right there. Each of the cards can be played at any time uh, if they specify. There's actually three different times in which you're going to be playing. It tells you in the rule book. It's going to be before you play a card, after you play a card, or during a resolution in which you can play certain cards in the game. Uh, and the cards will specifically tell you. Very, very simple. It's really hard to misunderstand when you play a card. It says, take a clear spell stone from an opponent that's um, awarded that, that player is awarded a victory point. It tells you before you play a card you can do that. And the reason why you want to play cards is because every time you play three of a specific color, you're going to move up plus one in that specific spell stone's uh, 
earth or fire or wind or air or whatever, and that's going to give you more points for these specific colors based on the ones you have at the end of the game. Okay, so let's go ahead now and show you how it works. So in the first round, you're going to go ahead and have the first player, the guy who's got this little red thing, choose a card and place it face down. Now, there are different types of cards, there, and they range from ace all the way to 12. Ace being the lowest and 12 being the highest. Uh, the ace will allow you to always lose, uh, unless there's a tie, then there's a possibility of you winning, but in general it's going to lose, but it will allow you to trade in five of your gems for five of these gold gems, they're very, very useful, and basically gives you a chance for wild cards. Uh, plague here is going to defeat any 11, uh, 12, or, uh, 10, 11, or 12, basically the highest cards in the game. Plague is useful, but only when defeating a player who you know is going to be using these really powerful cards to try and beat other players. And then you're going to have this little snake here. The snake is going to let you take three colors from the pool into your pool, regardless of whether you win or not, by playing the card. So we'll go ahead and just play down, oh, I don't know, I'll play down this green one here. And that is a secret. Nobody knows it except for me. And then I can play up to three gems onto this card here. So I can go ahead and say, oh, I'll play this one here. Now it's important to note that if I win uh, and I have green gems on here, I'm going to get to draw one of these green cards for each gem that I have on this card. And the same can be said for this player, even if he doesn't win, as long as he has green ones on. So this player over here is gonna say, okay, I'll play, I'll play this eight, put it face down. And he played a green, so maybe I should play a green too, just in case he played that 11. Then we'll go back to this player, and this player can also then go ahead and bet again. The maximum bet is going to be three, though. So once somebody gets to three, that's it. So this player might say, okay, I will go ahead and place another card, and another, another bet on here. Now it's back to this player here. Mm, put one of these on. Or, in fact, he can just go ahead and choose to no longer bet anymore, in which case both players can choose to pass if they'd like. And then they're going to go ahead and set these aside, and they're going to reveal. And the highest card is going to be the winner, unless, like I otherwise stated, there's a plague or something. So in this case, 11 beats an 8, and because the 11 was green, each player that played at least one of these gems here is going to get one card for each one. So this player is going to get two, and this player will get one. You can go ahead and put them in your area over here, and you can play them when you want. Remember, playing up to three is going to benefit you because it gets you more points at the end of the game. The player who also wins is going to take all the gems of that color and put it in his, his or her pool, and the cards that were played are going to get discarded face down somewhere else. Then it would continue with the player who won starting with this again. And so basically you're not going to lose this until you actually lose the trick. And players are just going to keep doing that, going back and forth, betting, placing down more cards, utilizing these special spell power cards to do certain things like swap out one, two, or three of your spell stones in play before other players reveal their cards. So before revealing cards, maybe you have three green on there, so they're all putting green down because they think you actually played a green, but in fact you played a dragon which was red, so you can swap all those out, place these down, and then you can draw these red cards if you win. Very powerful. A lot of these cards do a lot of different things. Some of them prevent other cards from being played, etc., etc. The game is going to end when a single player or players run out of cards. When there's no more cards left, there will be one more round of play, and that person will be excluded, and then you're going to tally up points. The other way the game will end is if one player has run out of these spell stones, and there's one more round, and then the game will end. When the game is over, you're going to tally up score, and the way you do that is you're going to look at your cards here. And let's go ahead and just give him an example of maybe a couple of these here. And I'll put this over here. Maybe we'll give this guy this over here and maybe that over there. Okay, so let's go ahead and just add up the score here. So we'll take our scoring track, and as you see, there's a red and a green wizard. You're going to tally them up. So this guy's got four red, and all stones are worth one, and they're worth plus one for each of the numbers here. So in this case, all red are worth three, so this would be worth 12 points. This is white, worth one apiece, but plus one is two, so two, four, six, eight, ten. That's 22 points. And then these are two, so that's 24 points for the red player. Pretty good, 24 points. You can go 20 and one, two, three, four. And the same would be said for this guy, and most likely he won, so maybe be like 32. In which case, whoever has the most points is the winner of the game, Wizard Bluff. Pretty simple, straightforward game with quite a lot of tactical decision making in it. Okay, so let's come up and I'll give you my review. So let's talk about Wizard Bluff, but before we get into that, a couple caveats, or one. When you're 
bidding, and you start, and you're the guy with the magical crystal of power here, you can bet up to three. But after that, the bids will go one at a time. So, for instance, if I bid one, then that would be it. I'd have to wait until everybody else got a chance to bid one or pass, and then I can go ahead and bid one again if I'd like, and then rinse and repeat up until everybody gets three. That's the max you can bet. However, at the beginning of the round, I could bet two or even three of the same color or different colors if I wanted to as well. Uh, and that's pretty much all I wanted to say. Just a clarity thing. I did it right in the explanation, but I don't think I said it very well. Uh, uh, I like this game. If you like trick-taking games and you like bluffing, this has got both of those things in it, and they work hand in hand. You are playing a game similar to Gorus Maximus, if you've ever played that one. It's a really cool little game uh, that throws in a bit of these crystals and these cards. Now, in general, I could say that you could include uh, opposing player powers that are all asym asymmetrical, but you could or you could not. It's kind of up in the air because you have all these little cards here that are going to give you beneficial powers throughout the game. You could choose to go and stock yourself up with white or blue or red or green. They all kind of function a little differently. They have different opposing colors that can eh, cancel the cards out. And you're always trying to play these cards because... If you, when you play them, you're going to go up in power. And at the end of the game, even if you don't play them, they'll still count towards your total. So if you had played five blue and one uh, blue was left at the end of the game, that would count towards six and give you an extra bump, making all of your blue crystals worth three. And of course, remember, gold is worth the highest elementary mass, elemental mastery that you have. So if, for instance, you have a red, blue, and a white at zero, and you have a green at two, all of your green will be worth three points. Uh, another interesting thing about this game, too, is the rats. The fact that it is one of the lowest cards in the game, but it has the potential to devastate other players. And when you are pretty aware of what they're going to play, because players are typically going to try and bet colored gems based on the colors they're playing, or the colors they think other people are playing, to guarantee them the cards, to guarantee them more victory points. Winning is important, but losing can be beneficial as well, especially if you want to specifically lose on purpose. When you want to play those alchemy cards, you're, you're probably going to lose. But you can convert certain gems you're not using or aren't worth as many points for gold, which then turns out to be the most valuable resource you can gain in the game. Holding onto gold is very, very important as well. And the game ends when somebody loses everything or discard, has no more cards left, and gives everybody else still a chance to play because there are certain ways in which that might happen. For instance, when you tie, the tied players can choose to battle or choose to split, and if they battle, they go into a little side match, which can make the game end sooner for the other players who didn't get to taking part in that round, still giving them a chance at the end of the game to take one more round, even though those other players aren't in the game. It is a wild ride. There's a lot of crazy stuff that can happen in the game. There's the certain cards that are going to be played at certain times. Let's go ahead and read a couple of these guys here. Uh, you win plus three victory points if any playing card have equal values. Wow. Play this before cards are flipped. Includes Alchemist and Ties. Pink Dragon Egg. The winner of this match earns three victory points. Play before the match begins. So you can just certainly gain victory points on the track as you're playing. This, uh, as you're playing, Take a green Spellstone from an opponent and that player gets one victory point. So usually when you take stuff from players, you're at least giving them something in return, even though it's generally not a good trade for them. Uh, swap one of your elemental stones uh, with any opponent's gold nugget from their pile. So trading a card, a stone that you may or may not want into a gold is always going to be very beneficial. I like this game. I think this is going to be right down the line for me as far as a trick-taking game goes and a bluffing game goes. It's got a nice combination of both of them. There it's fine. What I'd like to see is, if possible, you've got the card here with the wizard. Put another wizard on the back if you can. Maybe do a, a gender swap so that you got males and females on each side. There's no reason why you couldn't, I suppose, as long as you got the, the budget for it. Maybe a stretch goal or something. The artwork for the cards specifically, the different griffins and dragons and whatnot, work really well. It also works in tandem to the fact that certain cards affect other cards and how they're played. And using the stones to attach themselves to the cards for a bidding aspect is fun as well. If you're interested in taking a look at this game, check out down below. It'll be on Kickstarter very soon if it's not already up. I definitely suggest for you guys who enjoy bidding games and push your luck, or push your luck, trick-taking games, to take a look at this game. I really enjoyed it, and I think anybody who likes to mess with their opponents a bit is going to enjoy it as well. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. Hit that notification bell button. It helps us out really, really greatly, and we so greatly appreciate it. Also, don't forget, Wizard's Bluff. Uh, Wizard 
Wizards? Wizards, Bob. I keep saying wizards, it's a Z, right? A game of wits, wagers, and wizardry. One thing I forgot to mention too is this box is really, really cool. Uh, it's like a book, like a lot of the book style games, a little bigger, but it also will fit all the components in here nicely. Uh, and it's magnetized as well. This is super cool, especially when you can put it into a bookshelf. I, I just like the way they did this. I think they took a little extra time and uh, made it made it really nice. All right, all right. <laughs> anyway, check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter list, as well as checking out, we're giving away currently a new game called Joust for Fun. It's on our website as well, and you can have a chance to win. That's very, very easy to enter. And our live streams every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. PST. We give away games there. We have a community of people who've been going and watching us for years now, and we'd love it if you wanted to become a part of it. It's a lot of fun and engaging with us in the comment section and seeing games played just like this one down below on our stream. All right, guys, that's all I got for this time. And as always, I look forward to doing a little bit of wizard bluffing with you next time. Yeah, seriously, we'll have fun bluffing as wizards together with this game. You'll, you'll, you'll like it.